We give thanks to God for the many blessings today that we so freely enjoy. It's oftentimes that we forget to say thank you to the Lord for things that we can easily take for granted and sometimes fail to express, express our appreciation as we ought to at least for his bountiful grace that he has given us for the salvation that he has fought for us to have bled for us to have died for us to have I'm thankful that I'm saved today hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm thankful to be saved today I'm thankful to know Jesus I'm thankful that I'm not just a lost sheep. I'm thankful that I'm not just lost in the darkness. I've been found. Hallelujah. I've been found. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Not, I'm not just a hoping I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. He saved me. His blood washed me. He cleansed me. He brought me into his kingdom and translated us, the Bible said, into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He made us heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus. Hallelujah. What an honor. What a privilege. And so we say thanks to the Lord for the many things that we fail to fully appreciate because I don't think that we fully grasp the magnitude. We don't grasp the fullness of all that he has done for us. I, I mean, there's not words that can really articulate it. And the greatest of orators fail to describe it in full. All that the Lord has done for us. But we will continue to give God thanks today. In 1 Corinthians 16 is where I'm going to take my text today. And this wouldn't be by any means a traditional Thanksgiving message. Not that I'm one that ever follows those patterns anyway. But I want to talk about breaking the spirit of intimidation. Breaking the spirit of intimidation. I'm going to be reading in 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 13 to 14. Father, we just thank you for the word of the Lord today. It's very precious to us. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you cause truth to be revealed to us. That would be revelation knowledge. And it would be revealed to our spirits. And it would change us. And we would continue, Lord, to be transformed as our minds are renewed to your truth today. Thank you for liberty in the house of God to preach. Thank you for liberty in the house of God for people to receive, to hear, hallelujah, with gladness, with meekness, the precious word of God that is able to save our souls. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians 16 and 13 is where I want to begin reading today as we talk about this topic of breaking the spirit of intimidation. And 1 Corinthians 16 says, Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. That those verses definitely need to be read again today. Why don't you read them right out loud with me today, New Living Translation. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. The first part there that is said to us is to be on guard. Be on guard. What does that mean in relation to us today living in 2023? What does that mean today to us that are living in Canada? It seems oftentimes as Canadians, as living in North America, we can become very withdrawn and unaware of the many things that are actually happening in our world. We're very far removed from the conflict that's happening in the Middle East today. We, we sense it in our hearts as Christians. We, we feel it. But yet, as people today living in the, the sphere that God has placed us, we're very far removed from that. 
Israel is a nation that has to be completely on guard at all times because they know that all around them are enemies that their fullest desire, their greatest passion would be to completely wipe the floor with them and remove them from the face of the earth. And so they live with a very different mind than we have in North America where they all have to go through training to be a part of the defense because it is built into them that as people of Israel, you must be on guard. As the church of Jesus Christ, whether we're in Canada, United States, South America, Africa, or wherever we might be, we still have the same words spoken to us to be on guard. To be on guard. What, what does it mean to be on guard? Well, one thing I would like to say is being aware. Being aware. Being aware of the times that we're living in. Being aware of the things that are taking place in the earth today. Being aware that we are seeing prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes being aware that we are approaching the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ, being aware that the days are evil as the scripture said that they would be, that gross darkness would cover the land, but God's people were to rise and shine knowing that our light has come. If you are to be on guard, you cannot be asleep. You cannot effectively be at your post if you are sleeping, if you are asleep spiritually, if you are spiritually dull, if you have become spiritually complacent, where you are walking now out of tune with the Spirit, not walking in the revelation of the Word of God and the Scriptures that speak truth to where we are standing today, when you get away from that, the system of the world will have you very desensitized, sleeping spiritually. And instead of having goals for the kingdom of God, the fleshly ambitions will be to continue just to look for comfort and to satisfy our flesh. Nothing that would ever shake our world in any way just that everything would stay nice. But we are called to be on guard as the church of Jesus Christ, to be on guard recognizing that there is spiritual conflict no matter where you are located in the world. Spiritual conflict, conflict spiritual battles that are taking place, spiritual battles that are being fought, spiritual battles that are being fought for our nation, spiritual battles that are being fought for our families, spiritual battles that are being fought over your soul, over your soul, that there is spiritual battles that are taking place and that there is an enemy who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There are demon spirits whose purpose is to keep you deaf and to keep you blind. To keep the church deaf, blind, and mute. Deaf, blind, and mute. A church that has fallen asleep at its post is not a church that is on guard. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 3 that people could discern the weather, but we're unable to discern the times. Unable to recognize the signs of the times. Unable to be in tune with the messages of heaven and what is actually the spiritual temperature of what is going on in our world. That things are heating up. <laughs> One of the scriptures that came to me over the weekend was when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. I know since 2020, ordinary life was redefined in many ways. 
at least for those two or three years. And when things began to open back up again, I think too many people took a mind that finally things are back to normal. We're just going to find that groove again and, and thank God that the COVID days are far behind us. And it's easy in that kind of mind to fall back into bad patterns of thinking and complacency. But I want you to know today that it's not over. <laughs> This isn't a very encouraging message on Thanksgiving. Well, it, it, it can be. It can be if you hear it today. It's not over. There's much more to come. <laughs> There's a lot more things that are going to come that are on the agenda that will be revealed in Canada, North America, and throughout the world. Satan didn't give up. The battle is still raging. Darkness is still trying to press and overtake. And the church is still here. <laughs> Amen? The church is still here. The light is still present. In order for the church to truly be on guard, the church must be awakened. Awakened. Sensitive. Recognizing. The time is short. The time is short. We must be on guard and we must be diligent about Father's business. The time is short. We can't just fall back into normal life without discerning and continuing to discern the days that we're living in. That we're going to continue to see things transpire throughout the globe. And I feel like we're at that time again where things are going to start heating up again. To be on guard as the church, to be awakened, not woke, but awakened. <laughs> at least not woke in the sense that we see it in our present day culture with woke agendas that are filled with darkness, deceit, and wickedness wickedness full of control full of confusion destroying the souls and the minds of people the devil is a liar the devil is a liar I wanted to say that living where we live it's easy to get out of touch with much of what's happening in the world we can never get out of touch with God don't allow ourselves to do that not in allowing ourselves to be out of his flow or out of his rhythm where we shut off our ears. I see today a generation that I think greatly contrasts previous generations, and I'm not by any means slamming this generation. I thank God for each and every generation, and God will do great things in each generation. This generation is being embattled intensely. Intensely. The attack against our children, it's real. It's real. And it's easy to just, just dismiss it and be like, oh, these kids are crazy and they're all getting into all of this confusion and gender dysphoria and all of that. And where we're not in touch with recognizing, yeah, it's the enemy that's trying to attack and destroy a generation. Where we all, as the church could just be dismissive of that, dismissive of, of them, not love them properly, and not contend for them as we the church need to contend for them. I think there's a contrast of generations in World War II is almost 80 years ago now since it ended. I think people that fought in battles like that had a very different way of looking at life because of the many things that they lived through, the many things that they experienced. I'm sure they had a greater understanding of what it meant to be on guard. Amen. And when we sing, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee, I'm sure that those words were that much more emphasized in their hearts as they literally stood on the battlefield and the front of the battle lines, standing on guard for our nation. But as time goes on, 
It's, I find as though many times people almost forget the evils that have transpired behind us and feel like they almost live in a world where, well, that not, maybe not much, that much evil exists. <laughs> but the same evil that brought about Hitler still exists today. That same kind of spirit that would try and wipe out every Jew still exists today. The great evils that we've seen throughout history, cruel, evil dictators, the same spirit that worked in them still exists today. And people are capable of succumbing to that kind of evil today because people are still people. And because of sin, people can be taken to very dark places. So the Lord has called us as the church to be on guard, to be on guard, to not turn away from the realities of the world that we live in, but to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Not turn away from the realities that we live in, but to keep our eyes on Jesus, to keep our focus on Him, to keep our family focused on Him to keep our church focused on Him. In Ephesians 5, I want to read Ephesians 5 and 10. Ephesians 5 and 10 says, Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. <laughs> I love that. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. There is atrocious evil that goes on behind scenes in this world. Atrocious evil. with the Epsteins of the world. People who willfully serve the devil and they have an agenda that they've committed their lives to that is an agenda of hell, an agenda of darkness. Shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. I grew up still in the generation that you could go ride your bike wherever you wanted to go ride your bike. Come home eight hours later and throw something in the microwave and have a pizza pop. Get on the phone and call your friends for three hours and hope that someone comes home to pick up the phone because you couldn't text them. <laughs> but much of those days are gone now. And I'm not saying by any means that we should give in to every fear. I'm not. In fact, the message that I'm preaching today is much the opposite. But we do recognize that the world is different. Times have changed. Because of the internet, the many things that have unfolded in, in the last decades, the world is different than it used to be. But as we keep on reading here, look what it says. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. Hallelujah. We are the light of the world. We're in Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. We're a city that is set on a hill that's not to be hidden. Darkness and evil... Darkness and light, I should say, rather, always contrast. They never, they never get along. They will always be in conflict. So there will always be spiritual battle until it is all over and the devil is put in his final place, which he will be. I said, which he will be. Maybe I could take a moment and just pause just to remind the devil, you lose. You lose, loser. You lose, loser. 
Evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. As the church is to be on guard, the church is to be prayerful, the church is to be bold, the church is to hold the line and advance, hallelujah, taking territory from the kingdom of darkness. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, arise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Hallelujah. So why don't we all just go get a bomb shelter somewhere and hide away and wait for this all to be over? There's opportunity in these evil days. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the church's time. Amen. It's the church's time. We don't need to try and get as far away from it as we possibly can. We're the light, hallelujah, that contends with the darkness. Glory to God. But in order to be on guard, we must have our ears open, our eyes open, and our mouth, our sword sharpened, hallelujah, that we are ready to speak. Ready to speak that two-edged sword. As we speak God's word boldly in this last day, there is an attack on the church, on the Christians to stop preaching, stop standing, stop boldly declaring, be passive, be silent, fade into the background, just be good little citizens. But we remember first that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we don't draw our boldness from this world. We draw our boldness from Jesus. Hallelujah. He makes us bold. He makes us strong. Hallelujah. He gives us words to speak in this day. This is an opportunity for you. This is an opportunity for the church. But if we are not on guard, we can miss it. We can miss that opportunity. The next part I want to talk about here today is standing. For the scripture said to be on guard and to stand. And Ephesians 6.10 says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you may be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Anybody know what it's like to ever be bullied? Anybody ever had a bully? Anybody have a bully today? <laughs> because bullies aren't just for when we're children or, or youth, but you'll find that in life there's many people that still will try to fulfill the role of being a bully. <laughs> but if you've ever been bullied in your life at any time, I, I, I think I've been bullied and I think I've been a bully. <laughs> Growing up, I, I was a fighter, but I was also on the other end at times knowing that, well, I could think of one time scenario because you know, because I, I was a fighter and things like that, and just because <laughs> the town we had grow up in was a pretty rough place, and I remember having a conflict with a, a kid one time, and uh, this, this is the kind of things kids fight about back then anyway. They don't fight about stuff like this now anymore, I hope, but a kid comes up to me, and he says, I heard you said I wasn't addicted to smoking. <laughs> 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 and those are fighting words. And I, I knew that I could have wiped the floor with this kid. But behind this kid were his two much bigger cousins. <laughs> and so he hit me once, not much of a hit, just confirmation I could have did what I needed to do, but... Anyway, I took my hands out of my pockets because I wasn't just going to sit there and let someone beat me. But I also wasn't stupid enough to try and take on three people. But I remember having fear after that that I would run into him again. And how that kind of fear would stop you from going places you would like to go. And how it would take joy out of you doing many of the things that you would want to do. 
And many kids, I think, today still experience things like that. I think many adults are maybe experiencing things like that. They, they encounter bullies in workplaces, work environments. Some people have a bully at home. And bullies try to work through the spirit of intimidation. Intimidation. Having your two cousins behind you, that was a little intimidating. <laughs> a little intimidating. The spirit of intimidation will try and imprison you, drain you of your confidence, cause you to hide away. It could cause you to stop being yourself, stop expressing yourself because you fear retaliation, because you fear somebody's criticisms because you fear somebody's condemning words. And so a spirit of intimidation can become something that starts operating in your life even when the bully or a physical person isn't present. Because behind many of the things that we encounter and battle in life, there is demon spirits that work behind the scenes. And so somebody who is constantly trying to intimidate you may also have a demon that is working through them, a spiritual force that is trying to keep you in intimidation. To weaken you. To soften you. To stop you from moving forward and entering into the many things that God has for you. To stop you for believing for promotion. To stop you for believing for joy. To stop you for believing for increase. It's a thief. Intimidation. It's a thief. But I remember when I had seen this same kid sometime later. And he was by himself. Now, I, I know some of you are thinking, no, I didn't go <laughs> try to look for revenge. But I went right up to him and confronted the fear that had been trying to tear at my heart and was affecting my life. And I went up to him and talked to him. And I just there was a lot going on that day with running into him, but anyway, regardless of it, that spirit was broken in my life. And I've had many instances like that, many times where you face the spirit of intimidation. Some of you might have heard me tell this story, but I've not told it a lot. Before we moved here, just shortly before we moved to Brockville, we were having tent meeting. And we were in a, a public park where there's campers and things like that. We had had our meetings there before. But it just so happened that this time there was a group of campers that every time we wanted to start worship or start preaching, they would start cranking up their very loud music system in their car with big booming bass and, and playing songs like Highway to Hell and, and every kind of wicked song that they could think to play just to try and disrupt the meeting. And I preached the first night listening to that in the background and I could feel it affecting things and I didn't like it. <laughs> You know, church people can be very easily distracted too sometimes. When somebody goes to the bathroom, you've lost your audience for three minutes. <laughs> and so the second night when it starts again, I'm just about ready to preach, but there it comes again. So I said, well, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to ask them to turn it down while I preach. I just get into the vicinity of where their campground is, and this woman comes at me, guns blazing, full tilt, yelling at me, going hard, and, and man, she's just coming at me, and I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't realize I was walking into, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call that, but there I was, and there's no going back. Now I'm already there. And as she starts running towards me. Her husband, who's on the other side, sees what's going on, a quite large bald man, both of whom served in the military, and 
have apparently PTSD and are quite angry and and there's a spiritual battle that was going on. And this guy beelines it right at me, right in front of my face. I didn't even realize that some of the people that were standing back there watching this are, well, my wife was one of them, and she was getting a little nervous because other people that were in that group started surrounding me. <laughs> but I just stood there, and I, I talked to the man. I had great composure, as I often find that in situations like that, I don't know, God gives me this extreme chill. I don't know how else to say it. I feel the intensity of the moment, but at the same time, I, I can stay very level. And I start talking to the man, and I don't even remember what it was that, he, like he, these guys are going off on me. Get out of, you take that tent and all that, get out of here, and they're just going... But as I stood there and talked to the man, there came a moment where all of a sudden something broke through to him, and the guy storms away, but then he comes right back again with tears in his eyes, gives me a hug, and says, go preach your word, man. <laughs> Many of these spirits that present in this manner through bullies, through people that are trying to be forceful and, and overbearing and, and controlling, when confronted, it begins to break the power of that thing. And so where we read in, in, in the book of Ephesians 5 how that evil intentions will be exposed, when, when we stand against these things, the spirit of intimidation begins to crumble and lose its power. Light is greater than darkness. Hallelujah. Light is greater than darkness. In the days that we live, we must stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Well, the devil's trying to take our, our government. The devil's trying to take our media. The devil's trying to take the education system. These are some of his strategies. He wants to conquer these mountains because they are spheres and places of great influence. But as the church is on guard and the church continues to stand, we are able to be that light and the voice of intercession, hallelujah, that is doing battle in the spirit standing where we need to stand to be a voice of truth in this world, and those things begin to lose their power, and those things begin to crumble. But you must stand. You must stand when you feel afraid. You must stand when you feel pressure to run. You must stand in the evil day and not be silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many would like to call it a stand when they stand with their mouth closed and they try to live in the gray. But if truth be told, you might just be looking to protect your comfortable world. And you don't want anything to shake that. Truth be told, you might be afraid that somebody would not like you anymore. Truth be told, you might not be able to stand against somebody being angry with you. You just can't handle that. But I'm telling you today, there is times where you must stand regardless of the outcome. Amen. Now, you don't need to be a person that seeks and looks for conflict everywhere they can find it, and especially conflict of the wrong kind. There is good conflict. There is necessary conflict. And we can't be afraid of it. But in order to stand, you must be willing to do so uncomfortably. <laughs> uncomfortably against criticism against hate against lies against people's hate and I think I already said that part but their hate and their lack of any kind of care towards you How can we stand today when we can't even share something on social media that might offend somebody? 
How can we stand in days that might demand so much more than that? So much more than that. But yet, it's easy to be silent. It's easy to live in the gray. It's easy to be quiet and say, well, I just stand in my heart. Well, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than that. Because as you withdraw, Satan advances. We can't just stay silent and hide within our four walls. We must be wise as serpents. Hello, somebody. I said we must be wise as servants, as serpents, but we cannot stop, amen, boldly declaring the word of God. Many stay silent when it's time to speak. They stay silent when Satan attacks our youth with woke ideology, gender dysphoria, and it's evil. I hate what it's doing to our kids. Those are people that God loves. Those are people that God loves. And the enemy looking to rob them of their purpose, of their design. The devil is a liar. Many people are silent as abortion is normalized and even praised in our modern day culture. Many are silent. When the church was forced to close its doors, many wouldn't even speak. Many were silent and are silent as ungodly politicians take platforms that, that give place to evil and wickedness, but the church stays silent. Silent when loving Israel isn't popular. Silent when assisted suicide is becoming very much a normalization in our society. And as a pastor, I can't tell you how much I've run into this in just recent months. It's happening. It's happening not just a little bit. It's happening a lot. And we believe that all life is precious. That your life is not your own because you didn't give yourself life. God gave you life. God gave you life. And it's not your choice to choose to take it, nor is it anybody else's choice to choose to take it. It's God's choice and God's alone who will choose and determine when your time is to go. Although depending on how you live, that you might speed that up a little bit. <laughs> a silent church is a weakened church because it's not at its post. It's not on guard and it doesn't know how to stand. I've learned more about standing in these last years than maybe any other times in my life. Standing against the spirit of intimidation. Standing when for our own conscience sake we decided not to get vaccinated. And I'm sharing something personal here, but it's very relevant to what I'm saying. And not knocking anybody's choice either. But knowing where we had planted our feet in the position that we took... It took a stand. It took a stand when we weren't allowed to go in restaurants. And we had to sit out in the cool weather and in the rain while everybody else was inside. And you wonder where has our society come to all of a sudden where people are okay with this. The many things where we had to take a stand and you feel it took a stand when my kids weren't allowed to go inside the hotel pool and swim with the other kids because of a decision that never should have been forced on anybody. Amen. I wish you wouldn't talk about this, Pastor, while I'm talking about this. Should not have been forced on anybody. That's wrong. And it went against people's consciences, and for those who it did, they had to make a stand and to make a choice. And I walked through people on both ends of, with people on both ends of that, and this church did very well. Maintaining unity, walking together, not being torn apart through what was a very difficult time for many in the world. But these places where we've had to stand. My wife and my family, went, we went and took part in a recent protest that was just people standing up across the nation protesting the gender, the gender curriculum that is trying to come into our school systems across our nation. 
being put on children. They're not getting to choose what's being taught to them. But parents should be able to choose what is taught to their children. At least when it comes to ideologies that is not education, that are people's opinions and people's feelings that don't even coincide with science. I'm just saying that to say this, that in engaging in those things, you feel what it means to stand. And standing there watching cars drive by and you're like, feeling like some people are going to think I'm crazy. Some people aren't going to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's probably some crazy people out here standing with me. But knowing what it is that you value and holding to the convictions in your heart where you choose to stand. When I share things on social media from time to time, there will be someone who comes out of the woodwork who I haven't talked to in years that doesn't think to say hello to me, how you doing, but they have enough motivation to come on to chirp up to share an opposing view. And so it would be easy to say, well, we just won't share anything like that, and we won't, you know, we won't, we won't be loud in what we believe. That's the wrong approach. That's the wrong way to go. We can't allow that spirit of intimidation to cause us to stop preaching truth, standing for truth. You say, well, is it wise? When is it not wise to preach truth? You tell me, when is it not wise to preach truth? You say, well, we're supposed to be loving. Yes, we are. It was in the verses where I began reading. In all of it, like he gave some very strong things that we are to do, and I'll read them to you again. Be on guard, stand firm, be courageous, be strong. And then he finished that off and do everything with love. Amen? Amen? But these aren't soft, weak positions that he's talking about. These are very hard, difficult things. And in times where you will feel intense pressure, And the spirit of intimidation may be trying to press against you. And so you will know what it means to stand even when it's difficult to stand. The Bible tells us about the man Daniel. Which gets taught to us in Sunday school. It's a great Sunday school lesson because you get to do the fun little lions and all that stuff. (laughs) But Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. Why was Daniel thrown into a lion's den? Because Daniel stood when Daniel kneeled. And when an ungodly law was passed, that you are not to ask any petition of any God, you are not to pray to any other God or any other man in the land for a certain amount of days, Daniel would not obey. But he went home as he always did, with his windows open, And facing towards Jerusalem, he kneeled down and he prayed. There's so many places where Daniel could have tried to find a way around this. Understand that Daniel wasn't some unemployed guy who spends too much time in mom's basement watching YouTube. And so he's on some crazy tangent right now just trying to buck the system. He was a man of actually significant position. And this was actually why he was being embattled like he was being embattled right now. Because those around him who did not know God were jealous of how God kept raising him up and kept lifting him to these great seats. And Daniel was just about to get another promotion when these guys decided we got to try and find a way to stop this man and sabotage And so they were the orchestrators of this plan that came about, but persuading the king to pass a decree that even he was not able to go back on. Daniel could have found ways to try and ease his own conscience with self-justification and say, well, if I just close my windows, I can still pray. I can go in another room. I can kneel there, and I'm still facing towards Jerusalem, and I'm, I'm still praying. Or I could just shut my lips and I could just pray in my own mind because, well, we know God would hear me. 
He could have found so many different things that someone would have said, that's wise of you, Daniel. (laughs) I think that's wisdom. I think you're just being wise. Why would they say it is wise? Because he's avoiding anything that might disturb his comfort. And that's what many people want to call wisdom today. Avoiding anything that might disturb their comfort. So John the Baptist, he wasn't wise when he told King Herod of his sin because it cost him his head. Well, how far do we go with that? Was Jesus unwise when he lost his disciples and all but for the 12 left him and forsook him? Was he unwise as he riled the religious sect to the point where they wanted him crucified? (laughs) But in all of these things brought him to the place he needed to be, which was his purpose and his destiny that equaled a cross. Death, death, and his flesh felt it too. And he prayed in the garden, if there be any other way and if it be possible, let this cup pass from me because the flesh likes things comfortable. The flesh doesn't want to hurt and the flesh most certainly does not want to die. But there is things in life that are worth losing your comfort for. There are things in life that are worth losing friends for. There are things in life that is worth losing family for if that is what is necessary. And to stand for Christ and stand for Jesus in an evil day might mean some of these very things which I speak to you today. Some may hate you. Some may call you radical. Some may call you crazy. Some may call you bigot. That you have no tolerance. But let me tell you something today and to all of our culture. Tolerance goes both ways. Tolerance goes both ways. It doesn't mean that the Christian just has to tolerate everything that goes on in our civilization. But you need to tolerate Christians too. I don't know where the applause was there, but someone should have had one. These places where we will stand... It's necessary to do so. Necessary to stand against that spirit of fear and break, break the spirit of intimidation. Daniel did what he always did. He wouldn't even change his routine. He was true to God and he was true to himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I said he was true to God and he was true to himself and he didn't lose his identity because of the position that ungodly men tried to put him in. Hallelujah. He stood fast in righteousness, and he did what he always did. He kneeled and he prayed. He didn't just pray quietly. Amen. He didn't just pray quietly because obviously somebody heard, recognized Daniel's praying. So whether they seen it or whether they heard it, it was recognizable that Daniel was praying. Amen. Let's just be pri- quiet people. Let's just, you know, we, I like church quiet. Let's just be quiet Christians. Let's have quiet prayer meetings. Let's have quiet worship services. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. Hallelujah. Let's worship with joy. Let's worship with a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship with passion. Let's worship with life, praise God. Let's pray with enthusiasm, with fervency, amen, come on, with passion. Gripped with something that pulls our hearts in a way that we don't care what people think about us. Because what we love is greater than that which is against us. The love that is for us, the love that has filled us, is greater than the hate that opposes us. Hallelujah. And when the world is hating on you, be filled with God's love. Hallelujah. Be filled with God's love. 
Know that there is enough love to keep you and enough love to sustain you. Hallelujah. So this is the important thing also of standing in a body of like-minded believers. Hallelujah. Where you don't have to stand alone, but we can stand together, praise God. And I pray that the church all across the nation learns to stand up and learns how to stand together. Because as we do, we will be a force to be contended with. I tell you that. I'm getting ready to close today. It's speaking when it's hard to speak that we as Christians must often do. It's loving when it's hard to love that we as Christians must often do. It's forgiving when it's hard to forgive that we as Christians must often do. It's living different. It's not just living like the world. That we have to talk like the world, think like the world, dress like the world. No, we don't. No, we don't. But that we would think carefully about how I might please him. And this be the great motivator that leads us in the way that we lives our, live our lives. Amen? You see, legalism is when you live to please people. Start changing yourself just to make somebody else happy. Instead of doing it for God. Amen? Instead of doing it for God. So I've seen so many people that grew up in church and they... You would think they lived real holy lives until all of a sudden they go completely wild. <laughs> like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Give you an illustration. <laughs> Looking for trouble everywhere they can find trouble, it looks like. Why? Because there was something that was affecting the way they lived, but it wasn't from the inside out. It wasn't from the inside out. It wasn't from their hearts. And so as soon as they weren't forced to do that anymore, now they went in a different way. Hallelujah. That's why we don't just teach our kids to have a religion. We teach our kids to know Jesus. Amen. To know Jesus. That you would know him personally. That you would know him intimately. That he would be alive inside of you. And you will have strength to stand in the evil day because of the power that greater is he in you than he that is within this world, praise God. We see the spirit of intimidation portrayed through Jezebel and Ahab, these spirits that still work and operate today but were people in the scriptures. And Jezebel... A queen who loved idolatry, who had a mission and agenda to do away with worship to Jehovah, but rather to exalt paganism in the land, to kill the prophets of God. Elijah would stand against her. The fire of God would fall, but even Elijah would feel intimidation when Jezebel would speak back and say, I'll do to you just like you did to the prophets. That spirit doesn't just back down easy. If it would have, it would have been defeated that day. But that was a beginning of something. And later on, another prophet would anoint Jehu who would be king. And he would be the final one who would deal with the woman Jezebel who would be dealt with. But the spirit that worked in Jezebel still works today. It's a spirit of rebellion. It's a spirit of control. It's a spirit of deception. It's a spirit of intimidation. And it looks to operate through people like Ahab or to find people that it can use as pawns because Ahab had a spirit that was weakness and cowardice. And he was sneaky. Because when you are in weakness and cowardice, that's some of the ways that will take you to. You must be willing to stand up to some things in life. Sometimes that means standing up to people that are even in your own home. And having the kind of conflicts that need to happen. Be wise about this. 
But there is some that need to happen. Choose your battles wisely, but stand where you need to stand. Because some of these spirits will try and operate and work through individuals. We live in a day today where the children are trying to take over because that's the way that the world is trying to lead them in. Instead of the parent leading the children, the children are leading the parents. Not the way it's supposed to be, church. So we must deal with the spirit of Jezebel. Confront the spirit of Jezebel. See that these spirits of fear, intimidation, control are torn down and that God is exalted in our lives. Hallelujah. That Jesus is at the center of it all, praise God. And where that spirit did its damage, that the altars of God would be restored in its stead and God would be magnified and God would be praised. And we would have the freedom and the liberty to move with God and step into everything that God is calling us into as we deal with the places of intimidation that are trying to stop us. Sometimes these things are silent. Sometimes they're just the voice of the enemy. Just the voice of the enemy telling you what you can't do. Telling you you're unable to have success. Unable to move into that next level of business or that next level of promotion. Trying to intimidate you, to keep you stuck. Stuck in inferiority. Stuck in insecurity. But the last word that I want to close with today is courageous. Because you must be courageous. That even when you feel fear, you still do what needs to be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's one thing to feel fear. It's another thing to give in to fear. To recognize the presence of fear. Because fear can be coming against you, but it doesn't have to overpower you. Can you say amen? amen? Fear can be coming against you, but it doesn't have to overpower you. But rather you can expose it and address it. I see this for what it is. But God has not given me the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah but of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. And we're to fear God. Hallelujah. To fear God, to have reverence for God and under His mighty hand, humbling ourselves. We are able, empowered to contend with the things that we need to contend with in life because we are empowered by the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord is with me. So I'll be of good courage. I'll be strong. I'll be confident. I'll go to the promised land. I'll take what he said is mine. I'll fight the battles that need to be fought. I'll fight the giants that need to go down. I'll do what he asked me to do because he lives in me. He strengthens me. He encourages me. Hallelujah. He gives me grace even in the midst of battles. So that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because the Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is with me. And there might be fear all around me. But peace in my heart. Hallelujah. And you can have a crazy peace that doesn't make sense, because your peace is in Jesus. And you can have a hope that doesn't make sense because your hope is in Jesus. And you can find strength when everybody else's strength is failing. You can stand and you can be courageous, hallelujah, to go forward and lay hold on everything that God has commissioned you to do, hallelujah. As the Lord sends us all forth in his calling, in his fields of mission. We all have purpose. And we will at times be met with contention because there is spiritual battles that is taking place. We must not give in to the spirit of intimidation. This can show up in so many different ways. Don't lift your hands. People will look at you. Lift them higher. Amen. Don't talk in tongues. Someone might not like it. Talk in tongues louder. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
Unless you're in a church you shouldn't be in, then maybe you need to find another church. <laughs> the things that would try and back you down. How could you ever preach? You, you don't have any ability. How could you ever sing? You don't have any ability. But yet you feel a call inside of you. And the Lord is pulling you towards the purpose that he's given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Times when you don't understand, Lord, I'm doing your will. Why am I fighting this? Because you're advancing. Amen. Amen. Well, someone missed a shout moment right there. <laughs> because you're advancing. Because you're going forward. Because you're taking ground. The giants weren't back there. The giants are where you're going. <laughs> Amen. I said the giants are where you're going. But the Lord is with you. And that's why he tells us to be on guard. To stand firm. To have courage. Hallelujah. To have courage. And do what we know God is asking us to do even when we feel like we can't do it. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will raise up people that will believe in you even when others don't believe in you. Hallelujah. And it'll be a mark of his grace in your life. Amen. Listen to me. I speak to you today by the Spirit of God. The Lord will raise up people in your life that will believe in you, that will love you and support you. And even if 99 don't, the one that God has brought into your life that is his grace through is enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Is enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's enough. It's easy to get your eyes focused on everybody that's against you. Don't forget those that are for you. Hallelujah. Go rejoice with them a little while and forget about the haters and forget about the criticizers. Spend some time with the people that love you. Think about their words of encouragement where they're cheering you on. Amen? Where they're supporting you. Well, I, I might as well give up. Nobody cares. Somebody would care. So think about the ones that would care and not about the ones who wouldn't. Amen? Amen? Well, I'll well, just give up on this church. Nobody would care. Somebody would care. Amen? Amen? I can speak for Ascent Church. A lot of people would care. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So easy to get focused on the things that are against us because, because of the intensity of the battle. But we must remember the one who is for us. Hallelujah. For that is where we will find our courage. Amen. Amen. When I fasted and prayed with our, with our church in the month of January, the Lord brought a new anointing of boldness into my life. I had never experienced an impartation quite like I experienced that impartation. Amen. Where it was just so recognizable what, exa what was happening. And it was just, I didn't know it was coming. I... I just was having a time of prayer at home during our fast, and I was just walking the floor back and forth praying, and this boldness started coming over me, and an anointing, and I, I, and I just felt empowered. <laughs> I can't even describe it all to you, but in that moment, I felt like a lion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ready to contend with everything that I needed to contend with and everything that I needed to deal with. And I know that that was God's supply upon me, giving me what I needed for the things that need to be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He won't send you into battle empty-handed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So be of good courage. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. The Lord is with you. I pray that you leave this service ready to deal with every spirit of intimidation in your life. Deal with some people that need to be dealt with in some places and some things that you need to confront. But that you will no more give place to the spirit of intimidation. But you will rise in confidence and victory in Jesus Christ. Knowing you are secure in him. Loved in him. Hallelujah. And he has anointed you. For such a time as this, hallelujah.
Let's all stand together today. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you today. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray today that every chain of fear be broken off your life today. Some things that might be instant, in some places you might have to continue to put resistance. Amen? Amen. You might have to continue to put some resistance until that chain gives way and that chain snaps. But I pray over to you today, church, that in the name of Jesus, the Lord give you eyes to see and ears to hear, that you will be on guard, that you will stand, and you will be of good courage, that your eyes and ears are open, that you are discerning, that you are discerning and you are recognizing every spiritual force that is trying to work against you, work against your family, work against your ministry, work against your business. The devil is a liar, and I pray that everything that he's doing in the darkness it be brought to the light as the Lord exposes the schemes and strategies of the wicked one that are against you in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray right now in the authority of the name of Jesus that every spirit of fear and every spirit of intimidation that has been trying to cripple you, that has been trying to silence you, that has been trying to hold you back, be broken off of your life in Jesus' name. Anybody receive that today? You need to take it by faith right now. Take it by faith right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And be free from the yoke of fear and slavery. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You are a child of the most high God. And it is not his will for you to stay in intimidation. And as you press against this spirit, you might have to do some things that you've been uncomfortable doing. And you feel that trying to come against you. But do what God is telling you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do the things that you've been afraid of doing before. Amen? Amen. Share that post that you once were afraid to share. Break that spirit. Hallelujah. Break that spirit. And say no more. No more. No more. I will not live my life crippled by fear. I will not live my life crippled by abuse. See, some people, they lived in situations that were controlling, that were abusive for a long, long time. They don't know another way of living, but the Lord's going to show you one. Hallelujah. The Lord's going to show you one. And He's going to show you that there's a life of liberty and freedom. Hallelujah. That there's joy and peace. That you can rise in confidence and know who you are because you know whose you are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your life's not filled with a bunch of self-doubt and self-hatred. The devil is a liar. And I break every spirit of self-hatred in Jesus' mighty name. I break that off of you today in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of self-hatred be broken off of you in Jesus' name. That spirit that wants you to look in the mirror and hate what you see back. The devil is a liar. That wants you to constantly be stuck in what was yesterday and your past and framing your future by that. The devil is a liar. You'd be free from every spirit of self-hatred. You would know that you are loved. You would know that you are loved. His beloved. Hallelujah. His beloved. His bride. His church. And He made you. He formed you. He called you. And He's brought you into His kingdom. And it's not by accident. And it's not mistake. But for such a time as this, for such a time as this have you come forth. Well, the days are evil. Yes, but it's the opportunity for the Christian. It's the opportunity for the church. Hallelujah. We preach Jesus. We preach Jesus. 
and we don't apologize for it. Come on, somebody. I said we preach Jesus, and we don't apologize for it. We stand on the Word of God, and we don't apologize for it. We'll speak in tongues, and we won't apologize for it. We'll be vibrant worshipers, and we won't apologize for it. Hallelujah. We'll be loving even when people can't recognize it. And we won't apologize for it. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to do what he's called us to do because we discern the times. There's not a lot of time left. There's not a lot of time left. Now is my time. Now is your time. It's the church's time. Amen. Put both hands on the plow and thrust forward into the work of the Lord and into the Lord's vineyards. For there is a harvest out there, church, that is ripe and it's ready to come in. It is harvest time. And all of these things tell us that again. Can you say amen? Have a pumpkin spice latte, but no, it's the last days. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And don't lose sight of your mission. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. If it costs us our Starbucks, we'll let it cost us our Starbucks. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I bless you today, church, in Jesus' mighty name. And if there's anybody in here that quickly needs prayer before we go, I want to lay hands on you. If there's anybody, I just want to give an opportunity. Maybe you feel like you've got what you need already, but if there's somebody in here right now and you just feel like there's a pulling, just to come right, come right now. I want you to come right this moment to the front of the church, and I want to pray for you. And if nobody comes, I'm just going to take that as a good sign. Thank you, Father that you feel like you've got what you needed today from the Lord. Hallelujah. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Love your family, love one another, and be the light of Jesus Christ. God bless you, church. You're dismissed today in Jesus' mighty name.